Welcome to the taster session for the Cambridge Technical Introductory Diploma in IT. So this is a new vocational course that we're offering for the first time this year. We have had very similar courses running in the past. In the last few years we had tech level and before that we had BTEC. And a lot of the content is very similar. Okay, so to take this course, we're looking at a grade four in English. It's not essential that you have computer science or another IT based course in order to take our subject. And the main reason for that is a lot of the stuff we cover is very different from what you would do at GCSE. So whilst prior knowledge is helpful, it's not essential. Resources will provide you with exercise books. You should definitely invest in a USB flash drive so that you can transfer coursework from school and home really easily. Some of the files can get quite large, especially if they're multimedia. And of course you'll need a computer that's running Windows and Office. And there are a few bits of software that we'll link to throughout the course. We'll also be using Google Classroom for the setting and handing in of homework. Okay, so what is a Cambridge Technical? Well, they're level three courses, they're vocational. So we have a very much hands-on practical approach. They are fully equivalent to A-level and they do give UCAS points as well. And the one that we're offering is the IT Infrastructure Technician. And this is aimed at those of you seeking to develop skills and access a range of junior support, IT technician, or help desk operator job roles. So this really is a solid grounding in IT support and IT technician work. So assessment is nice and straightforward. The course is split into five units, and 50% is done by exams, and 50% will be all of your coursework that you'll produce across the two years. So here's a look at the units. So in year 12, We've got Unit 1, Fundamentals of IT, and Unit 18, Computer Systems Hardware. And you'll notice that Unit 20 is in both year groups, and you're adding to evidence as you go. In the second year, Unit 2, Global Information, and Unit 4, Computer Networks. Okay, so Unit 1, as I said, is an exam, and not all these units are equal. So here we've got 90 GLH, and that stands for Guided Learning Hours. So that's a round of time that you'd be looking to spend on this unit. And the coursework units are all 60. So the things you'll be covering, be looking at computer hardware in a lot of depth, all the various input and output devices, components, processors, motherboards, memory, expansion cards. Also look at the different types of computer systems that there are out there. You'll be taking a look at software, all the different types of software, such as open source, closed source, bespoke, and you'll be exploring different applications, what they're used for. You'll look at a lot of different communication software that's available, and also how to troubleshoot software as well when problems occur. You'll be looking at different types of business systems. So we'll look at servers and virtualization, and a little bit on networking as well here. You'll be looking at the important communication skills that we need within the IT sector, and any software and technologies that can help support that. You'll look at a range of different job roles and generally get an idea of how you can progress into employment. The last point there is looking at ethical issues, such as how we use information and codes of practice. We'll also look at security in a lot of depth. So it might be things like physical security with locks and biometrics and shredding, but also digital security as well. So things like antivirus and firewalls. So Unit 18 is a practical unit, and you'll do this in the first year. And there's quite a lot of overlap between the exam unit and what you're doing the practical. So you'll be blending a lot of the learning together. So we'll take a very close look at all the components, and you'll be very hands-on with this. And you'll need to propose a system for a business requirement. So you'll need to select the hardware that you're going to use for a given purpose. And then what you do is actually build the computer from scratch. We've got a lab of dedicated equipment so that you have your own tools and hardware to complete any of these practical tasks. In addition to that, you'll look at upgrading older systems where it might be cheaper than a complete replacement. Finally, you'll test and evaluate the functionality of computer systems. So here you'll be looking at running different types of diagnostic software to test that you've built your computer correctly and it's performing as it should. And you'll carry out some benchmarking as well to that effect. So this is the first coursework unit, and the way it'll work is you'll be set an assignment brief, and that will have various tasks on that you'll need to provide practical evidence, such as photographs, video, and so on, of you actually carrying out the work. 
Okay, in the second year, you'll look at computer networks. So you'll learn about the different types of networks, such as local area networks, wide area networks. You'll understand all the different components that we need to set up a network and the protocols that we use. So a bit like in unit two, you're going to do a planning exercise where you'll be given a set of requirements and you have to design a network from scratch for them. You'll learn how to plan for maintenance in networks. So you look at how to troubleshoot using a range of tools, explore disaster recovery, carrying out updates and making sure that a network continues to run as it should do. And networking is absolutely critical nowadays because every business is online. A large amount of what we do socially is online and all of this uses computer networks. Some say that this pandemic has happened at the most opportune time for our society. It's sunny outside. You've not had to do any exams. Our technology can handle all of the vast amounts of data, including the data that has generated a grade for you. Some of you will lock out, some of you will maybe lose out. The internet is working. Netflix, online shopping, social media, track and trace. This unit, you're probably not going to be doing until you're in year 13, but it covers global information. It's the use of information in the public domain across the world. The cloud, the internet, information used by you, used by different organisations. That data needs to be managed and protected. And companies that are succeeding are the ones that are doing this well. How do organizations use information internally and externally? How do they process it? How do you use information on diff of different types? What has the law got to say about your data? And how does data become useful information? All of this info will help you prepare for the world of work in this industry. So the unit will look at, firstly, who holds data? What's it stored on? How can we access it and browse this information? What's the difference between the internet and the World Wide Web? How do you best connect and what types of network can you actually join? What types of information and what formats does that information take? What are the advantages and disadvantages of information being stored like this? How do we make modern life easier? Think about banking and shopping and entertainment. And balance that versus the risk of theft and loss of privacy. Secondly, we'll be looking at styles of information and management. What style of information, text, video, etc is it and what purpose does it perform? How is it classified? Is it private, sensitive? Is it anonymized? How good is the data? Does it have bias? Take a look at this picture. Do you know who that is? When a program was created using artificial intelligence to analyze this face, it came up with this. How is it possible in our modern world for a computer to be biased towards whiteness? That's one of the things that our society does need to consider. How does all this data get managed? How does it get analyzed, transmitted? And how does this affect the cost and the individuals who are doing that work. Thirdly, data versus information. It's the difference between raw versus processed, the difference between raw beef and a Tesco's family burger. How is data used in different fields or categories? Businesses, entertainment, etc. How is information used or data used within organisations? thinking about shops and the NHS and things like that. The stages that data go through and how it's analysed. Open and closed information systems, structures and their benefits 
and limitations. Fourthly, UK law about storing and using data, global law and the difference between it and British law. Green IT, are we actually making the environment a better place through our data farms? Are we causing more damage? How is information actually gathered from its source via surveys, researchers? Fifthly, the theory of something called data flow diagrams and how they show the flow of data through a system, what impacts that flow. And finally, information security like confidentiality, risks to data and the impact of data leaks. What can we do to protect data? Through policy, physically, and that would even include something called logical protection, i.e. using coding, encryption, passwords, things like that. This theory will be tested in an exam. So, here's a sample. Here's a sample task. Thinking about different types of information storage media. It's a prioritized task. Given the following types of media, paper, optical media like CDs, magnetic media like a hard drive, solid state like your memory cards. Think about the best to the worst in terms of capacity, how much data can be stored, the cost, what's the cheapest to the most expensive per megabyte, and the durability, how long will your data be kept safe on that particular type of media. Pause the video and have a go on paper now. So here are some results that two teachers can agree on, but of course you may disagree, and that is something we could debate. And that's what lesson time is for, so hope to see you in class. With data playing such a big role in our modern society, you'll not be surprised you actually already know a lot about this topic. Play the following Kahoot and I guarantee you will not be surprised that you recognise the right answer from among the choices. So the final unit is unit 20, and this covers both years. And this is IT technical support. So here you'll look at understanding what a help desk role is all about, the sort of activities that you do day to day. You'll do a lot of diagnosis and troubleshooting in this unit. So you'll be presented with a number of different problems, hardware and software, and your job will be to try and resolve them. And in a number of cases, you'll be doing this for real, where there'll be a real end user that could be on the telephone, it could be face to face, it could be via email and so on. And the idea is you have plenty of experience to build your confidence up in a support role. And we'll teach you how to provide effective customer support to a range of different customers. So in the first year, this unit will cover mainly client computers, so desktops, laptops and so on. And then in the second year, this will mainly focus on you supporting networks. So as you can see, these units provide a wide range of practical skills that you'll develop. OK, so as this is a vocational course, there's something called meaningful employer involvement. And this is really important. In order to get the qualification at the end, you must undertake meaningful employer involvement. So we have to evidence this in order for you to pass the course. And here's a few examples of what we do. So you'd have to do a week of work experience and this must involve IT in some respect or be within the IT field. And you'll need to research and find a placement for this. And obviously we can offer support where you need it. A lot of the assessments and tasks we do are set and reviewed by industry practitioners. So people that do this day to day. And we'll use expert witnesses as well that will look at the practical work you're doing and perhaps observe you in a practical lesson. So finally, there's some more milestone work. It's just reprinted here. You should have a copy of this. There are three tasks. The first one is to find out the complete spec of your computer at home. 
So there are several ways of doing that using the programs built into the operating system or some third party tools. So you'll simply list all of these CPU, RAM, hard disk, and so on. Task two is looking at job roles. So we need an A3 poster, and you're going to look at the job roles listed there, animator, IT technician, network manager, programmer, and web designer. For each of those, you need to highlight the skills you would need to do that job. And this is both the technical skills and the non-technical skills. The final task, task three, is to compare the different types of software available. Again, those are listed there, bespoke, closed source, embedded, freeware, off the shelf, open source, and shareware. You're gonna put this into a table, and I've given them some headings that you can use there. So the software type, and the description, advantages, disadvantages, and some real world examples of each of these. So the best approach for this is to lay it into a table. So that concludes this taster session. Just remember, this is a vocational course. There is a lot of opportunity for practical work with real equipment. But do remember, half the course is also assessed by exams. So there is a lot of theory to cover as well. But this would be an excellent stepping stone to working within IT.